Yes, do we have sound? We have sound. Good morning, everybody. There are more chairs here, so please fill them up. Five more, six, seven. There's sound and video screen upstairs, so if you see too many people moving at the back, please inform them that they can uh, also watch and listen uh, upstairs. Um, welcome at the start of the ITM, and I think it's the second day of the trans Hall meeting, isn't it? I would love to introduce you to my colleague, Birgitta Persson, Secretary General of trans Hall. And this is my dear colleague, uh, Nan van Hote, Secretary General of ITM. And we are very good colleagues and very happy that we could organize this one event in collaboration. And uh, we do several collaborations together now. We started a, a big EU project together, Creative Lenses. And now, for the first time, we actually come together with our meetings in the same place. And it's very timely that we come together to Hungary, to Budapest today. And we wanted to... It's important for us that we organize this event in solidarity with the independent cultural actors here in Hungary who are fighting for uh, an open and inclusive Hungary. And we are very uh, happy that today we get an opportunity to, uh, to hear some stories behind the pictures and the short messages that we get through the media. So I'm happy to hand over the mic to Nick Thorpe, BBC journalist living in this country for over 29 years now. So he is a, an insider from the outside. And we have two insiders from the inside sitting next to him. Um, give a hand to Nick Thorpe, please. Thank you very much and um, welcome to Budapest on this beautiful sunny morning on this beautiful river on this beautiful white room. I'm very pleased to be joined in the panel in our discussion this morning by Ildiko Tokac. <laughs> Ildiko is a, um, a freelance consultant on cultural projects. She's the former head of the Hungarian um, Cultural Centre in London and is also working very closely today in the Hungarian Film Foundation training program. Also on the panel is um, Mate Gaspar, formerly of the um, Kretaker, of the Chalk Circle Theatre Company Project, and nowadays development director of the Budapest Festival Orchestra, and he also teaches at the University of Film and Drama, a very well-known figure in Hungarian cultural life, like uh, as Ildiko. Um, is Hans van Fleet in the room anywhere? There was a gentleman called Hans van Fleet, who if he arrives, please join us on the panel. <laughs> um, we were also meant to be joined uh, by Andras Donchev of the Hungarian government. I know many of us here on the panel and in the audience, no doubt, would have had questions. It would have been very nice to welcome him today. Unfortunately, he did drop out uh, yesterday at the last minute. He has uh, other uh, very important commitments. There are a lot of changes, as ever, in Hungarian cultural life. But if anybody in his place from the audience um, would like to represent Hungarian government cultural <laughs> policy. We would very much welcome your views, um, and we'll do our best also to try, and I as moderator will do my best to try and weave in what Andras might have said were he here. Um, I think we should sit down. And Juri, Juri, are you going to take part with us? Yes, very good. Thank you for a bit. We're all very pleased that Jody Sobo is stepping in um, at the last minute um, as founder and managing director of Trafo, the House of Contemporary Arts here in Budapest. And again, another iconic figure of Hungarian artistic and cultural life. Please join us on the panel. <laughs> Good. 
So I think we'll sit down and start. Um, I thought to get the discussion going this morning, and I'd also like to impress on you, we're very keen to hear your views, have your contribution in the next hour and a quarter or so of this discussion, um, the main theme of which is to introduce to you Hungarian culture, Hungarian artistic life today, what's going on, what the, what's at stake today in Hungary. Um, and so we're very keen to hear your own views, your own comparisons with what's happening in this relatively short time that we've got in your own countries, but also from the Hungarians in the audience as well, very much like your participation. And I thought, as a sort of to get the discussion going, um, I, as a journalist covering Eastern Europe, have spent most of the last three months at one or other of Hungary's borders covering the refugee crisis. I also noticed that on the uh, opening page of the IETM website, there is a call for artistic projects dealing with an artistic responses across Europe to the refugee crisis. The deadline for that, as you may have noticed, is November the 16th, so you still have 11 days to apply. But I, would, I thought I'd ask by, start by asking uh, Ildiko, Juri, and um, Mati what they know of, what they know of the artistic responses so far, what they're aware of at this moment going on in Hungary in response to this great, this great Greek drama. Um, okay. Marty. I, I start. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> um, well, sorry. Okay, we, I turn my back to you next. Please don't feel offended. But, uh, okay, like it, it will be better. So you're absolutely right uh, to start by th this question because it has really been the the most important uh, topic, and and it's it has really been a dramatic situation in in Hungary uh, the last uh, three or four months. First, as I'm sure that, that most of you uh, have followed closely, first there was a real <coughs> uh, invasion of uh, all kind of uh, um, migrants coming from uh, from different areas, and it it really it, it was uh, something absolutely unattended, both for the officials but also for the, the general uh, uh, public, the, the Hungarian civil society, and and we um, we had very moving times to um, um, to to find the good reactions because the official reactions of course were rather hostile and also quite impotent uh, actually at the, at the very beginning uh, but the civil society <coughs> uh, has mobilized itself in an amazing way so we we witnessed a, a wave of solidarity which was absolutely unknown uh, and absolutely not as spectacular as it became during these uh, few very hot uh, summer weeks. And I think that with this help and with this um, <coughs> uh, really very very touching and also very efficient help, uh, which was basically a humanitarian, humanitarian uh, aid from, uh, from um, inhabitants of, of Budapest and also inhabitants of those uh, <coughs> cities living at the south of the country where the, the migrants uh, massively entered, uh, helped those people to, to, to survive their few days or weeks in, um, that they passed in Hungary. Because obviously, no one really wanted to stay in Hungary, and, and this is still the case. And it has been the case the, or the, the few um, the past years as well. So Hungary is not a destination country for people coming to Europe to, in, in search of a better life. So that's why it was particularly alarming to, to, to hear the official propaganda saying that, that we, have to, we as Hungarians and we as Hungarian state have to de uh, defend ourselves and have to defend uh, our uh, way, way of, of, of living and our culture. And that's why I think it's a, <coughs> it's a pertinent question because uh, culture has not been mentioned uh, as often as it, as it, it, as it is now. It, it became, again, uh, uh, a main topic. What is, what is our culture, what is Hungarian culture, and what is European culture in, in large? Let me quote uh, our Prime Minister, who just yesterday uh, delivered a speech at the uh, Hungarian um, Sci uh, Academy of Science, which hosts uh, an event 
similar to ours or even a bit, bit bigger. It's the World Science Forum taking place in, in Budapest with some uh, 4,000 delegates from all over the world. And, and Mr. Orban gave the opening speech <coughs> and he told that we as Europeans have to be very aware of what's going on because uh, uh, he feels that, that, uh, that uh, the real stake is not considered by the European uh, societies and if we don't watch out, our culture, our way of living and our former life will be challenged and can, be, uh, and can collapse. <clears throat> so these are, this is the official uh, uh, opinion. And what kind of responses uh, can, can be done? What kind of, what, what's the room for alternative voices? Uh, very little. Um, Partially because of, uh, I think, by, by fear of interfering with the, with the official propaganda, which has been very massively spread um, in, in all kind of uh, public uh, media uh, surfaces, but also because, um, according to a recent um, a survey, more than 75% uh, of Hungarians are happy, for instance, with the fence and uh, endorse the, the government's policy to close the, the country with physical barriers uh, from people who are trying to, to, to pass uh, through, the, through the country. So it's that there is a sort of uh, mutual um, uh, consensus between the majority of the population and the, the, the official uh, opinion. So we have relatively few uh, so the, the the smallest part of the, the the society who thinks differently and and who dares to speak out uh, uh, along those venues so just let me quote two examples that i'm aware of um, uh, a well-known uh, filmmaker and theater director uh, Korne Munruzzo, he's just uh, opened at the um, autumn festival which is called the budapest cafe festival um, a, a play that he had presented before in the Netherlands, and I think it was in the Rotterdam Opera, which, which, was, which is an adaptation of the Winterreise of Schubert, where uh, the video installation part showed pictures of, of, of refugees, and this whole wandering um, uh, story was somehow matched with the, with the current lives of, uh, of a refugee coming to, to, to Europe. So this was one of the examples that I saw recently. And the other one is a, is a new production in a, in a small alternative theater called the Studio K that I hope that you will have the chance to, to meet. And uh, it's a documentary play uh, opened two weeks ago called uh, Hotaraing Our Borders, which explores the opinion and, um, and um, reaction of Hungarian citizens towards this, this new phenomena, having people looking differently than, than we coming to, to, to our home. So it's also quite an um, important work, but one of the very rare ones. Thanks, Thanks very much. Ildiko. Okay. Uh, I quickly, because I just don't, I want Judy to stay with us as long as uh, he can, and he has to leave earlier. Um, so actually, to, to being um, in, in culturally sensitive, uh, it's very hard to live through what's happening uh, here because culture now appears in a completely different context as before and uh, in a way that um, that's the only way that I think we can somehow bridge this situation, what's happening uh, here right now in Hungary. Um, so just joining actually the, the project that uh, we were discussing, um, that Verzio Film Festival, the press conference is right now, it's a documentary film festival, they have a section for um, refugee um, themed films and also a workshop about um, this. But um, actually when we were discussing a little bit before we met, we realized that it's not so many projects and it's interesting why art and why cultural sector is not reacting stronger. Uh, However, as I mentioned, culture um, is appeared in a completely different role than before because um, as uh, Mate was um, reading loud, that actually the mainstream um, uh, saying about why we have to fear and why we have to be threatened about this refugee crisis because different culture is going to destroy ours. 
Um, and this is the main um, issue that, that all the politicians is, is constantly, constantly repeating and uh, making Hungarians, and I think not only Hungarians, but in Hungary is quite uh, strongly seen uh, as frightened. And I have to say that this is a great brainwash because uh, people, um, even if they're not practicing culture every day, they, this is something that they say, okay, Islam is going to destroy the, uh, the, the Christian culture in, 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 in Europe. So this is easy to, um, easy to understand, easy to communicate. So for, I think, culturally sensitive person, it's, it's even more, more um, how to say, more um, sad or sadder or, or, or really makes us uh, feel bad that they use culture in a very wrong um, way. So I, I, I do hope uh, that somehow um, the reaction for the cultural sector and the culture makers um, become a bit stronger. But um, there's another example. I think a lot of photographers were there. So I was recently at a book launch at uh, Open Society Archive, and um, there was um, a Hungarian photographer showing very strong um, pictures. So lots of photographers and filmmakers, uh, primary, who reacted first, I think, um, in an artistic way um, to this um, Greek drama, as you mentioned. Sorry. So on my territory, let's say performing art, uh, I would like to summarize what is the main change, is that uh, there's lots of money, bunch of money in the institutions, at the institutions, and no money on civil society level. So it means that on project level. On the top of the institutions, there are, let's say, appointed directors, and so they have, uh, they don't have a strong link to the political era, but anyway, there is a kind of self-censorship. It's very, very, very strong. It's built in, and somehow the system reminds me, because I'm old so much, to the one-party system, and uh, which is new for me is, one is in, for example, Josef Katuna Theater, which is, let's say, the traditional big theater, they took over the language of independent theater, which is much more straightforward, because before, in the 90s, 80s, 70s, 60s, uh, no, 60s, no. So there were, uh, each play had a double bottom, you know, a double meaning. You have to read the lines or to hear out what, what is their sense, but it's much more straightforward. So it's, it's, yeah, I'm very happy for that. But at the same time, it's a big question what the independent scene will do in theater, because because this kind of aesthetic value has been, has been taken away, it became part of the market. It's very strange <laughs> to say that. And uh, what's new? Uh, there's a, the independent scene is the first scene which is international, and very international, like Cornel Mudruzzo, uh, Arpa Chilling, uh, uh, Victor Bodo, and uh, who is the, uh, Bela Pinter, so they are internationally recognized. And in, in dance, it was not typical at all. But now there's a young generation because they were grown up in an international context. And now they are on the international scene. And so, so it, it means the theater made it maybe around the beginning of the two, 2000. <laughs> and now we can see in dance the same things. Okay. And, uh, what else, what I can see, because there's less money, much more smaller projects. Bigger project can come to, uh, into life existence if there's an international network. So that's why in, in Central Europe, I guess everybody looks for international collaboration because that's the only way to make bigger pieces. And I think this is the key to the freedom, freedom of self-expression. That's very important. So, uh, for example, Truffo as the major venue for this performing art. So our policy is to provide as much uh, freedom for the artists as it possible. So we increased our uh, performance number from 150 up to 220 with the same stuff. <laughs> so it be, we became a very a strong machine uh, bad side of it, we don't have relationships so, so much with the artists because we don't have time to speak. <laughs> because we have to generate 
yeah, this is very, very sorrowful for me. But you know, this is the way how to serve somehow the community because if they don't have subsidy, if they do good pieces, we have to good, very good marketing, five, uh, seven persons work on it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. <laughs> but anyway, the tick, at least the ticket income, the most of uh, the companies, they get, they get the ticket income. So, so that, this is the big transition for me. The other problem is for the independent scene, there is no real advocate of the independent scene because uh, uh, in the former time, uh, uh, as a, as a Trapfo director, I, I really went to the, um, let's say, the professionals and uh, I could really protect the independent scene's interest. But now, at the moment, this kind of relationship has melted down, so you can see nobody came here. So that's that's very important sign. What is the dialogue? There is no discourse at all. But I guess in the near future, because the situation is getting so uh, bad, so uh, missing really a vision of the future, and I guess now the government, maybe I'm too op optimistic, they feel that uh, something is wrong because uh, so many young artists want to leave Hungary. So that's, that's a key, probably a possible keyword for them, the, the future generation. Because politically, they're really uh, motivated to stop the older independent uh, generation, let's say the, the big generation, because they are very old spoken. So they are straightforward. And they, they would like to change it. You know, it's very strange how they think. And, they, and for example, these, uh, uh, these uh, theater makers, they would like to see in the, let's say, the state theaters, which is a very, very strange uh, argument for me. Uh, I don't know what is in their mind, because uh, it's a, so much different aesthetic. So if somebody would take over a theater, then they should fire the most of the actors and actresses because they have to use these special actors and actresses for their own quality. So it's, there, there are so many controversial. So very briefly, what I feel that there are many, many uh, uh, sentences, uh, strange visions from the government, it, but it's not coherent at all. It's much more scattered. And there are some certain personalities, they have a certain very, very strange vision and they try to uh, impose it to the the field, but uh, but f if that person f uh, would fall out, let's say from the the governmental uh, elite, then the person will disappear immediately. So as you know, so it's a so it's very hard to say what is this, but that's important. That, that that's very uh, clear for us. This hybrid culture what we pre we represent. It's for them, it's absolutely not necessary. They would like a much popular culture. So they, they, want, to, uh, they want to support music, uh, including classical music, new circus, uh, creative, creative industry, but not so much documentary film, for example. You know? So these are the all elements what I can see and very hard to, to, to get in the position, to speak to them at the table, on equal, uh, okay, equal level, yeah, in a partnership. So that's a question, uh, to resist all the time, or resist and, t and talk with them, you know, to, to uh, negotiate with them, you know, so that's, that's, I guess, that's the next step. Because this way, what we are trying to protect ourselves, it's okay, but we cannot find all the time solutions internationally. We have to, make our battles <laughs> uh, uh, at the round tables ourselves. That's, that's my opinion, maybe, because maybe I have to go very soon. So that's why I would like to summarize my perspective. Thank, thank you very much. At this point, any contributions from the floor? Any questions or uh, comments? Or? Immediately, before you, before you leave, Turi, maybe it's, uh, can you explain, because you told us that when you were a director, you could defend the independent scene, and now you can't anymore. Can you explain why? <laughs> Matt is the same situation, you know, so it's a, it's a very strange. So we are, let's say, professionally respected, but I have to tell you, many, many very, very professional people without job, 
or they take they are put aside totally. So it's it's uh, so what's going here? It's an intellectual tragedy. It's an exile. It's an exile, and it's it's really very hard. I have three children, so you know. So I'm uh, I I'll, I I'm that person who have all the time vision, and it's really difficult to tell them what to do. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after after three months, uh, uh, Joseph Nagy asked me to come back. Yeah, yeah. And so he he is the director, and um, uh, I'm the ma managing director. So so we can do whatever we want anyway. We, we as I said to you, we have more money. But our partners, the artists, uh, they don't have money. You know, so it's it's a uh, it's very uh, inconvenient. Uh, situation, you know, so, so uh, you want to spend it, you know this somehow, but it's it's how because, uh, uh, for example, for us, which is essential problem, if if I want to work with the artist, there should be a structure, but no structure, you know. So how can I communicate with them? How can the project be pulled up to a certain measure, and how can we raise the public? Is there freedom of expression in Hungary today? Just a quick uh, reflection, because um, um, there is some kind of co completely joining to what Yuri, Yuri said, that for you to understand. So it's, it's now it's a huge question. Either you leave Hungary and you do your profession somewhere else, and leading festivals, and then I have lots of friends who left Hungary and working in Germany, in the UK, uh, doing festivals, cultural programming, great, great things. Or that other half of my friend uh, decided, yes, that I am professional. So I, I, I try to stay in my profession, but then uh, your dreams and your evenings are not easy. Because uh, you have to balance uh, between doing something right and and how, how what is my border? So uh, what is my um, border to do things and to negotiate things and talk to everyone? Or when do I say, oh, that's my stomach is not bearing anymore? So it's, it's those questions which, honestly, I've never thought that I would, I would meet. I have heard from our parents uh, that it can happen. So it's, it's very, very hard um, to, to create value either here or somewhere else. But if you leave, then, of course, then your responsibility, your Hungarianness, all your knowledge and all your roots and everything, then you can use it, fine but then it's not, it's not the same. So it's not a black and white question. So I cannot say anyone else that, uh, that for example, <laughs> like, like working for the National Film Fund, there's a lot of things that I love what they are doing, but obviously there's a lot of things that I'm not very happy with to doing. So should I work for them or should I not work for them? This is, this, I, can, I can add something to, to this area. Or, so it's very, very hard um, to decide that if you would like to create a value, whether you are joining and... and, 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 um, and it's not a good word, fighting, but trying to uh, represent your values. It, it's possible, but it's, it has a brilliant many of questions. Mati, would you like to comment on that? Just a uh, last thought about this, this refugee question. I think that, that uh, the official Hungarian um, opinion about this, this whole issue is, is uh, is really hypocritic because, as you probably know, some 400,000 Hungarians left the country and migrated to the to the western part of, of Europe uh, during the last uh, five years. So, Hungarians uh, are uh, um, are migrants themselves as well, and partially those who are who, who lost their possibilities or their their perspectives. Uh, in in the cultural uh, life as well, but but many others, of course, who are who, who are active in in different parts of the the market. Um, so I think that that there there is a we are also part of this this movement, as a, as as you said. Uh, also, many we we are also constantly thinking about whether we should stay or whether we should rather uh, uh, leave and and try something else uh, somewhere else. Um, and, and, and this is not because we would not love our country, or we would not lo uh, love our culture, or we would not be very motivated to, to make things better here, but because of sheer lack of, of, of possibilities or, or, or the restrict, uh, restrictive uh, environment. Mm. So I think that, that this, this, this migration issue 
will remain on the agenda and, and in a much larger sense than, than it's, it's treated now with, with people coming from Syria and, uh, and Afghanistan. Um, just yesterday, I, I, I've received a, an online survey from an uh, outstanding uh, organization based here in Budapest, which is called Budapest Observatory, uh, led by Peter Inke. I, I'm sure that many of you uh, know him very well because he's uh, also an emblematic figure of the of uh, the cultural life, not only in Hungary, but in Central Europe and, and, and beyond. And they are doing um, regularly a cultural climate barometer. And uh, so they just launched this online survey um, uh, yesterday where they ask questions about um, what are the climatic conditions for culture in your country. Uh, so it's, it's not only for Hungary, but for, for, for all over Europe. So I, I strongly recommend you to, to, to have a look on, on that um, survey and, and, and give your opinion. Um, and when I was opening this, this survey and the first question was, what are the most problematic factors for culture in your country today? And uh, there I'm offered um, 25 different statements that I, I should uh, choose five from. Um, actually, I started to, to click on, on, on them and when I could not go after five, out of the first five, uh, or first, first six, uh, I checked back the, the, the rule of the game and, and there I discovered that actually I can only f uh, check five. Um, and uh, so I had a hard time, a hard evening and a hard night, <laughs> as you as you saw yesterday, because I was looking at it and I, I thought, no, come on, it's, it, it cannot be possible that 25 out of the 25 would be an equal match, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 I, and I could argue for all of them why why it, it's problematic. So I thought, okay, let's let's move on and let's let's see the rest. And then a few pages later, you have the opposite. What are the five most promising or most positive uh, aspects uh, uh, influencing the cultural climate in your country? Where very wisely, the same statements are turned into positive. So I thought, okay, let's see. And with all my good intentions and optimism towards the future, I could, I could not choose one. Because, and, and then, then at, on the last page, there was a, a, an open place that please put your comment or advice how to improve this survey. And what I had to put there that, I'm sorry, Peter, but here and now, it's impossible to make statement, statement in this white or black manner. So I cannot, I cannot uh, uh, choose the, the, the five most, uh, most burning uh, problems, and, but I cannot either put five uh, 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 positive aspects if, uh, if, if they are put at the, at the extreme poles of, of the same phenomena. And I think this is, this is the, the, our reality and that's why we are we are we are struggling and we are we are staying all those who, who who don't want to leave because because you cannot or i don't feel like saying that this is this is just bad or this is this is the, uh, just good but the the network of the problems is very complex and 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 very um, very tough so i would not even i, I I suggest you, you go and check this place, uh, this uh, this uh, platform, and, and and you will understand what I'm talking about. And I'm sure that many of these problems are very present in in your countries as well. But but for me, it was it was striking to to see that there is really no difference between cultural policies lack relevance to fundamental issues of society, which is rare, which is right, and uh, exodus of cultural talent from the country. This is right as well, or uh, low professional level of cultural managers, which is well as well. So, so one one has the the, the difficulty from which end to tackle this this, this tough net network of uh, uh, of problems, and therefore the only possibility that that we focus on our little uh, uh, territories, and maybe we will talk about it a bit later at the university, for instance. What what can be done with small groups of of, uh, of young generation, um, future professionals, mm, but uh, but on the on the on the policy level, um, it's, um, it's 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 very gloomy. 
Jury, while you're still here, I wanted to ask, you know, I notice in the media, for example, um, looking at Hungary from outside, there's, um, especially in the German press, there's a lot of views that somehow, or people assume that freedom of expression is dead in Hungary, that somehow um, everything is so state controlled that people can't say their views, express them. But in my experience in the media, in fact, there is a, a plethora of opinions. It's actually a very exciting time in terms of what one can read, especially online, notwithstanding all the lack of advertising in anything other than um, pro-government media. But do you feel, at Trafo, any pressure at all on what you show on, on the expressions of, of what's going on? Or is there still... Because, you know, I'm, like you, was old enough to experience the 1980s here and the pressures which artists were under, the silencium, the silence imposed on a playwright like Istvan Churka, for example, um, who, you know, who, who later went in, in, in other directions. But it's, uh, yeah, how are you under pressure at Trafo? Are artists in Hungary, apart from all the issues of funding and so on, which I know are central, but are you under pressure to put on certain shows or not? So it's ab absolutely, in, in a way, uncomparable uh, with the 80s because if I did, very often I was, uh, I was uh, called to, to meet with the uh, representative of the secret police, you know, when I did at least seven or eight times I was, they did not punish at all, <laughs> but they said, why, why, why? So we had a real strong quarrels. Nowadays, not at all, not at all. So there's, a, there's no censorship, I can tell you this. If, if I can say that there are two kind of censorship, it's self-censorship, it's very strong, and through the, which is much more delicate way, no money or less money, and less and less and less money. But uh, the third thing, which is also very typical, but like these are not special, not Hungarian, and they create such a, such a situation when you can be easily corrupted. I guess the, the, the biggest issue for me, the corruption, the corruption of the system. So how can you draw your borderline when you say yes or no? You know, so you have to, you have to be very strong in your values. And that's, I guess that's very important. I guess the, for me, the recent government in itself, it's not an issue. Because I guess the government comes, the government goes. The most more, uh, uh, I'm economist basically, so that's why I have a different uh, mentality, whatever. The problem is much more that many, many valuable artists, persons are pushed aside and they have to go to the commercial side. And there's much, much question, much more uh, uh, question, and I'm very interested in, uh, so in researching, is, so wh how can we protect the art? Because in a very strange way, the art is the cradle of commercialism. Because the value is born in art, and the commercial mechanism take it over when it became very obvious this is, there's a value, you know. So, so I would say that it's a question of input and output. What is culture policy? But personally, and with your institution or with your network, what you can do to protect art or feed the art, uh, because that's, that's a, 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 for me, it's a big key question. i tell you one example. I don't want to say which institution, a very famous institution, not in Hungary. <laughs> I went there and I saw there a performance, 1,000 seats, uh, from uh, maybe South Korea. And I was really surprised because uh, it was very pompous, very colorful not so much meaning, and so on, and so on. But the public adored it, really, which is, which is, which, which is a, anyway, a card place. And then I spoke to people, uh, the management, so I'm surprised seeing this one. Of course, the government was behind the, the, uh, this event. And then I started to talk, why don't you invite Hungarians? And uh, for example, I said to them, Korne Mudruco, they have a big set and uh, I guess quite welcomed. And I heard that it's not our aesthetics. And I said then, I had a question. So I saw this uh, South Korean stuff. South Korean? Yes, yeah, South Korean. <laughs> it was not your aesthetics. 
but this is their life, you know? And I said, okay, so if you want to know, for example, what Gaspar was meant, so you should invite this kind of company. No, it's not your aesthetic. Because anyway, they, they will just know what's going there in, in the East, or in Central Europe, like Kusturica's film, you know, which is not true. It's a very, very well done film. <laughs> I like which, Kusturica. Which, which of his films? Other films, he's all films like that. <laughs> yeah, it's all about, you know, it's a, the, uh, what, is, what, is, what makes stronger, the cliche is about our region. You know, but for example, Cornel Mudruzzo or whatever, so they don't come over because we have a strategy and a connection with the public. So do we want to uh, uh, educate them? So do we feel responsibility when we say Europe and the diversity? You know, our partners, I mean the Hungarian partners, they all struggle very often with the Western partners but because they keep saying that, oh, this is not aesthetics, not aesthetics, but we have to buy the Western, let's say, uh, uh, artworks, which is okay. But when Viktor Orban goes to abroad, he sees exactly the same thing, you know? And that's why he's very popular because this kind of, uh, let's say, value communication, value change, uh, exchange, is, uh, there, there's, a, there's a stock there, and his answer is his answer. You know, I don't agree with that, because I sit down again with the people, okay, let's talk, let's talk with the professionals. We, I, I believe in small steps, but in, the, in, the, in Central Europe, where there's a different historical background, you can find much more people like Orban Victor. They want big steps, because they want to be heroes. <laughs> So that's, the, that's my, my response. So, so this, this would be interesting to talk about it because this is what I can see, I have to tell you, on our professional level. Okay. Is there someone else from the floor that would like to contribute or ask something at this point? Is there anyone there who wants to come in? If there isn't, Ildiko. Yes, I would, well, I would have a comment um, on both. Um, I might be a bit, maybe a bit black and white in that, but what you were just reading out, I haven't um, read his observatory. Um, I, I probably could quote a couple of problems uh, which might change a little bit, but I don't know how it will happen. There's, this is the cultural management and cultural leadership which is missing in, in Hungary, and now we have actually jury. I, I, it's not very easy to, to quote five person in Hungary who understand business and culture. And I'm not saying that because you're an economist, but uh, I think for the future, I know it's a hard time for cultural institutions because of lack of um, government funding, but I think this is the key for the future to learn how to be more independent from the government. Because if the, if the source of the finding we rely on, which happened in Hungary last, I don't know how many years, so the, then, then, it, then the independence will not arrive. And not, I'm not saying because if somebody gives the money, they can um, dictate because it would not be good. But for an institution, and this is a bit of uh, my learning from the UK, uh, where I spent five years trying to sell Hungarian culture, and um, I think it's possible. Uh, it's, it was always possible when I didn't want to sell it as Hungarian, but as the quality of the art. Um, so that was the reason that we could organize the photography exhibition at the Royal Academy of Art and all the musical event, Budapest Festival Orchestra. So if the quality is there, I don't have to emphasize that it is Hungarian. But uh, I agree with you, we have to learn how to get in touch uh, those decision makers more in the mainstream culture and also in the alternative uh, culture to, be, mm, to participate more. But that's, again, something that be, be, beside cultural management and cultural leadership, I think we have to learn that numbers and economy is not our enemies being in a cultural uh, world. But sometimes I'm really not very welcome saying this, although I'm not an economist, but still uh, I somehow feel uh, that there is a way that we can persuade our decision makers that Culture is not just some fluffy, fluffy, lilac, uh, not money-making and not uh, uh, socially important things because uh, I, I'm sure that some of you read the first survey done by Ernst and Young about the growth, uh, which uh, first time trying to also show numbers what culture and creative industry makes in Europe, these 540 billion euros, 7 million jobs. So it's not only about 
money, but it's about people and it's about creation and it's about, as I said, bridging in, in the, the, um, the refugee crisis um, and, and Europe. So, this, so culture is much more than just uh, that we are thinking about it is in Hungary. So I think even if it's a bit change of the mindset would happen in, in this country, which now I don't really feel that's the room for this, uh, then maybe there is a hope uh, then, then decision makers would uh, take culture in a bit upper level and, and realize uh, that uh, investing in money that's also not, that makes money and makes jobs and makes a healthier society. Um, and that's exactly, I have to say that, um, first of all, I was a bit like, um, how to say, a bit negative that culture is so capitalist in the UK. <laughs> because I said, why is everything is based on money? And, uh, and living there and understand, understand that it's not only negative. Because, uh, because it's much freer, it's much more professional, and, um, and you can do really relevant thing uh, if, uh, if there is a kind of measurement um, behind and it's not destroying the quality at all. So that was a big change in my mindset because I had a bit of prejudice that oh, how can these two things put together but then I have to say that it, it, it changed and now I'd be, I'm a bit more critical uh, for our um, cultural, uh, let's say, uh, sector. Yeah, someone from the Thank you, Willie White from uh, Ireland. Just to respond to Ildigo's remark there, um, I think we should not let go of the value that comes with public support of culture um, because there are different values with private, whether it be private companies or private individuals. We can think of many controversies where art institutions uh, running biennales were taking money from petroleum companies or whomever. So um, I think a responsibility then comes uh, when artists make work with public money. And I don't think that um, necessarily the interests of private, in, private companies are the interests of the public all the time. So I think we should be very careful. We're lucky in the UK, or those in the UK are lucky, because there are lots of trusts and foundations. But the record of companies supporting culture is not always a good one. So I think we should hold on to. And then the question that we have to ask ourselves is why we do not have the trust of the public and of the politicians they elect when it comes to supporting culture. That, to me, is an important value that should not be relinquished. Yes, I just a quick reflection. Um, just, it would be good if those public money would be, tran uh, would be as transparent as private money. So I would be very curious about the price of an opera ticket, for example, uh, from our taxpayers' money, uh, to see how much money invested, for example, in the Hungarian opera, how much visitors are there, and to very openly and transparently seeing which happened. Actually, in, in London, a Royal Opera House, we had a very open debate uh, for the members who were supporting, and they were very uh, open about, about the sources. With 90 million pounds over that time, 40 million public, 30 million uh, private, 10 million um, uh, supporters or um, like a sponsorship money. So I'm just saying that it would be nice to handle those public money so transparent as a private source, for example. I think there was someone over there, but first I'd, I'd come back to you, perhaps on, on the music side, as development director of the Budapest Festival Orchestra. Well, I, yeah, I, ju I just wanted also to give give a quick reaction because I fully agree with what you you said about this. Um, um, so I, I think that that we have to be very aware of what kind of values we are attaching to um, when when we are establishing cooperation with private partners. But I think that Ildiko has right that when working or exploring the partnership with a private partner, you you can be um, it, it's it's easy to um, to read what is what this company stands for and, and, and it's easier to decide whether you would like to cope with that or, or not. There has been uh, cases, for instance, at the, with the orchestra as well, when, when, when we told that even uh, a prestigious company uh, would have loved to, to, to join and become a sort of sponsor for a particular event, but, but we have con considered that what kind of uh, products they are uh, uh, making, what kind of values uh, they, are, they are working for, what do they mean by by educating f future uh, uh, audiences, um, and we decided not not to get into corporations because uh, we felt that, for instance, it's it was not 
it, 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 these were not healthy products or these were not uh, environmentally uh, uh, clean um, uh, proposals. So we gently decided to, to pull out from, from these conversations. And I think it's, 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 it's feasible when you, when, when, when you work with the privates because they are transparent enough. The problem with the public funds, especially here in Hungary, and that's what Yuri referred to as well, that it's, it's, it's not tra transparent. And when you start having the feeling as a Hungarian citizen that you don't trust your own uh, public subsidizers because they, they don't stand for the same values, or I could be more critical <laughs> um, in, in, in my sentence, uh, then, then, it, then it becomes problematic because because uh, there, and, and this is how, how far you can you can go in negotiations with them, and how, how far you can align your your intentions and values with the ones represented by by, by public authorities, and and I think that that's why we we feel so so nervous um, here because we are full of uh, uh, ideas and 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 we are absolutely sure that 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 those projects should be developed, but but we are getting more and more reluctant to um, to cope with the representatives of um, of, of of the public uh, authorities, whether it's a grant scheme or it's a venue or or or, or just people whom you should shake hands, and um, and it's 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 getting uh, really more and more tough, especially. And I think this is this is the big news. Since you have, uh, since ITM came here last time, the, the last ten years, that this idea of of, of the current uh, uh, regime about creating the, and we were just laughing about it when when it was first uh, announced, the, the the system of national cooperation, it's called, and it's a, and it's now a sort of reality. So it's such a centralized and he uh, hegemonical. Uh, um, structure of the, the, the society that there is very little room left around it, whichever way you would like to be uh, around. So it's, it's a real uh, question for everybody whether you cope with the, this, this national collaboration uh, system or, or, or not. And if you are not part of the game and if you don't feel like uh, joining, what's left? Thanks. Someone, someone at the back there. Yeah. Hello, um, Anna Hopfer from France. I would like to um, ask you um, in what way would you describe the relation to um, the public? If you said in the beginning that there were 20, um, no, 75% um, okay with what happened uh, with the um, stopping with the border, um, so how does this change? How do you define the work with the public? This question? Whoever would like to answer it. Yuri, for example. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a crucial question. <laughs> uh, which is interesting because uh, you talked about the press, or, or me, uh, you talked about the media. So it's, it's interesting because we don't work so much anymore with, the <laughs> with traditional, so with the offline, and even in the TVs and so on and so on. So we try to we, we we have a strong focus on online communication, though we, we we see what is the limit of it. So we cannot do we can do less and less. So it's a big question now, how to support uh, the artworks now in the near future because there's a constant change and very very quick change. And now what I can see the for example the government wants to enter into the online online world. It's it's uh, it's very, it's getting very clear. It's a recent new strategy for them. So, so uh, you know what, so with the, with the public, so the, the Hungarian public is quite poor, I'm used to say that, you know, mostly those are very interested in, in, in uh, new stuff. And more and more uh, potential audience leave Hungary. So I met with somebody and uh, he said, Yuri, your public is beyond the border. And I said, yes, in a way, true. 
the other interesting issue for us... But you can still read them. You can still reach them, I guess, thanks to the new media. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah but, but anyway, which is also interesting, there's a new public flow in, in Budapest, because uh, the big majority of the university uh, students coming from the countryside or from abroad. <laughs> but it's two different cultures. And uh, uh, what we can experience who come from the countryside. So uh, the, the main problem of Hungary, the urbanization level is very low. That's why there is no mobility and that's why my answer, there's no management. Because the management needs mobility. It's very clear. If there is no market, no manager, because the artists can do themselves, the free phone calls, that, that, that's all, you know. So that's, that's, that's very simple. So the question for us, so a, a total ignorant public, potential public, flows into the Budapest market. What, how can we work with them? We have to find this new method because uh, it, it needs a slow integration process. Uh, uh, the online is a very good uh, uh, chance to find out something, but uh, it works, let, let's say, in the last five years, but I see a new tendency. I guess more and more people, are, I don't believe so much on online. I hear that in Germany, the youngers, they don't come on Facebook now. They look for something else much more. What I can see, you will see, you will come to Musi, uh, I guess one day, for example, which is a new thing, it's a very shocking, but very positive thing. Uh, in Musi, every Monday, there are 400 <laughs> kids playing games from 12 till two o'clock in the night. So it's, it's unbelievable. You know, I took there some, some uh, uh, managers from our network and they were shocked, I mean, positively. <laughs> That they said, there, there's, a, there's an iPhone, they don't use iPhones, you know, they just play, uh, play different games, you know, so, so that's, that's something positive. We have to see, there's a transition in the society, we have to come closer to the smaller, uh, smaller circles all the time, and we, we ha you have to do a very direct communication. So that's what, what we can do. But that's a question, so how the, 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 the society mentality will change in a larger scale. That's a question, and if you can see that, you can build a, a certain relationship to these changes. And uh, that's, I'm trying to figure it out, what is this? So what we also learned that, for example, I'm a member of this research group, the locality is the new thing, and not the internationalism. There was a very nice TEDx uh, uh, presentation by a black woman from, no, not black, it's not PC, how is it? Should I say it? That, uh, oh, it's yeah, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> Speaking about America, she, uh, her, her origin is something like African, different African. And it was very interesting to see that. And if I understand this new kind of thinking, we have to understand, let's say, the presenters and promoters, that we have to, so it works, your communi our communication works if the references meet. But in that case, you have to know your target group, and you have to know the value of your, uh, let's say, art piece. <laughs> and so, so, and then how to mediate it, uh, it's getting a profession. I, I talk too much. Um, just one reaction, although I really, uh, for your, precisely for, to your questions, I can't really answer because now I'm not working, I'm not representing an institution, so I'm not really working with audiences or with public. But just um, some thought that I uh, could say that it's a good sign that it's not easy to get any theater tickets. So I'm now an audience and, and saying to, uh, to you my experiences. So you have to be very quick to get a Kotona Josefsen has a theater ticket, which I think it's not, not a bad sign. But on the other hand, um, it was very sad that, for example, um, the recent movie premiere, Vesetek, which was funded here heavily by the, the National Film Fund, and which has a very very actual topic um, was visited very um, few people. And um, obviously there is a lot of reason for it. Why? Uh, you, could, you could blame the marketing, you could blame um, lots of things, why not? 
But my question is that whether Hungarian society now is ready for such a film. Are they interested in such a film? Because um, unfortunately I have heard and I know, I'm not sure that it's true that all these ref against refugee campaign which was in Hungary in the summer, first I thought this is a brainwash and then someone told me, no, no, it was a very careful market research when it came out, which actually Mati said that 75 or even more percent of Hungarian not really like foreigners. So let's use this and let's build on this feeling and so get more voters uh, for, for my party to build on this. And if it's true, I'm saying I'm not sure that it, I'm, I don't know if it's true, it was just a gossip, but if it's true that it's very frightening because I think that's such a responsibility from a government to build on this kind of not very good kind of perception, this fear of foreigners that would last longer than we will live, I think. So this is a kind of long-lasting responsibility which probably nobody thinks about. So, but back to the audiences, so that's all my experiences. I can say that actually, um, and also not easy to get ticket to truffle, so which is a good sign. So there's a niche audience still interested in contemporary and alternative art. And then we were also discussing there's an interesting thing what's happening in Hungary, that there's a lot of hugely interesting things happening in the alternative art world, which is the mainstream culture has big questions, what's happening there. But it's a funny thing how maybe we are used to this, that the mainstream culture is so prescient and so influenced um, by politics, and that's a good response as alternative culture can, can flourish. But I have to say that it's not my generation, but below one, two generations in the 20s, there's a lot of interesting things, um, things happening. As uh, low budget, even one of the film which was most um, uh, visited in Hungary was a very low budget film. And a no name filmmaker, Van Valami at the cash. So 30,000 euro and more, almost 100,000 visitors, which is a very high number in, in, in Hungarian uh, cinemas. So I'm just saying that it's an interesting um, phenomena which I encounter in, in Hungary today, that although the mainstream culture has questions, the alternative has very interesting answers. And um, on, I'd like to react as well to a couple of, of things you've both said, or that, that's been, that have been said today. Um, I never thought I'd find myself quoting the Pope. Um, <laughs> But um, the globalization of indifference. Um, there's a very interesting conversation in um, a book published relatively recently by Karachan Gabor. Gabor Karachan, his work's not translated into English, um, though I think some that I know of. Um, and he's a writer, um, a participant in the 1956 revolution, um, who died very sadly this summer. Um, but very much someone culturally on the right-hand side, on, on the pro-Fides side of the um, uh, cultural divide in Hungary today. He relates a conversation between himself and his novels are very interesting that they, they weave in real characters and real events. And in his last novel, um, there's a conversation between himself and Andras Lanyi, who's a environmentalist, a conservative-minded environmentalist, but a great opponent of the government in some ways over its nuclear building policies and so on. And they're talking about what's often a taboo subject in Hungary today, which is the relations between the Jewish community and the non-Jewish community. And um, they're describing how there's a conversation between Andras Lány is someone of, of Jewish background and Gabor Karacsony is someone of non-Jewish background, a, a Hungarian national patriotic person who took part in 56 in those terms. And um, they're talking about how the Holocaust was possible, how it, was, how it happened. And they're speaking about the Hungarian Jewishness and its patriotic nature, for example, in the First World War how the Jews of Hungary, you know, and, and this city, Budapest, in 1900 was 25% Jewish. And the conversation goes on that what happened at Trianon when Hungary was divided after the, when historic Hungary was divided after the First World War was that the Hungarians didn't start hating the Jews, 
but they became indifferent to them. Pope Francis's word, the globalization already in the 20th century of indifference. And that was how so many um, Hungarian Jews were taken away, why Hungarians didn't lift a hand to prevent that happening. And this indifference, I think, if we look at what's going on with the refugees today, it's not that Hungarians hate refugees. They may be afraid of them, thanks to the government's poster campaign and so on, but I find it's an indifference to their fate because people aren't meeting them, because they're not establishing eye contact with them. Even at the times when Hungary was allowing, up until October the 16th, seven, eight, nine thousand people from Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, across its territory every day, you couldn't actually meet them. They were being put in buses immediately and tr on trains. You know, it was a great, it was very well organized and shipped across the country to Austria. It's your problem now. Um, but in Hungarian kindergartens on the border where I was, the local, the soldiers and the police who'd been invited by the government to patrol that border and keep these terrible people out or help them cross the country quickly, they were being invited into the kindergartens to meet the children. But what a fantastic opportunity it would have been for the kindergartens, the primary schools, the secondary schools, to invite people from Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, into their classrooms to talk about geography, to talk about their stories, their adventures crossing the Aegean Sea only two weeks earlier and so on. And so I think, to, in a roundabout way, coming back to what you were saying, Julie, about the, the possibilities in the arts today about the locality, about not necessarily apart from international and national cooperation, this local cooperation, when you establish the eye contact in the media, when we speak about thousands of people, a flood of humanity, a, a river or a trickle of humanity, we are also guilty of not identifying the names, the faces, the individuality of each of the people coming and of each of the people standing there at the roadside wondering who is coming to visit to live in, to pass through our community. And this, um, I think this is something which the arts can always do, which the media should do more, even the mainstream media, that, like the ones I represent, can do more, which is just to establish the, to, to make that eye contact. And this is also one of my own fears about social media and about the games children play and, and teenagers play today on social media, that there's less eye contact there between people than maybe they used to be. Any thoughts on that? Perfect. Any more? We've got a little bit more time. Yep, there's someone there. Come halfway. Uh, hi, my name is Pippa. I lived in the UK for 15 years, but I now am based in Australia. Um, I just wanted to pick up on a couple of points. Of course, to reiterate Willie's uh, point about the importance of public funding, but some concern over idealising what happens in the UK because I think that actually a recent survey done this year, the Warwick Report, said that between 8 and 10% of the population is engaging with subsidised culture. That's very small, really. Um, and there is a very exciting movement, I think, that is not being talked about enough in the cultural sector, but is coming through activism, particularly around the environment and economics and climate change. And this is particularly around food production and energy production, the shared economy. And we are not talking enough about that in our sector. And in some ways, this idea of market, this very old-fashioned idea of market that is failing us globally, um, is really not the future, I don't think. Um, really interesting, interesting to understand your vision because you say I, I, can, I have a very bad vision because what I see from my pa I'm from Italy. Okay, uh, what happened in these 20 years is that it was uh, it has been a, like an erosion, er, er, erosion little by little. You know, you can pers the, we can feel it. You know, uh, day by day, but something was missing. You know, and in the end. You realize that going back 10 years ago, uh, it was like, you know, we lost uh, uh, 
uh, many many money in in uh, you know public funding in public funding, but uh, which which are the strategy now? I mean, because is there any strategy? Uh, I mean, an institutional strategy in that? Because uh, if we think about that, it's it's the it's the point. If it's a strategy, it's really a risk. I mean, if if it's not a strategy, but they are trying to find a way, okay, we can uh, create a dialogue. I don't know, you know. But if they know where they are going, it's really uh, a totalitarianism. Uh, you know, I, I agree. You know, um, I guess each institution, or many institutions, who have uh, who feel responsibility. I guess the, uh, the strategy build on responsibility. So those who know aware of responsibility, I guess they built the strategy. So what I can say, I don't, didn't, I didn't talk to Katrina Jeff's theater and or, or very profoundly with Kreta uh, Kerr, but I feel it. You know, if you are a expert or let's say you visit these institutions and artworks very often, uh, you feel it. That's a question that uh, this kind of, uh, uh, let's say, resistance against the market, against uh, this kind of uh, policy or politics, uh, does it have a coherent platform? Because that's the pro that's, I guess that's a, uh, the key issue. Because in Hungary, we are in we are very weak in that, so that's why there is no resistance. There are no crowd on the street when, when we want a, a, yeah, there was a but long time ago, long time ago. 20,000 so, 20, so, so, 20, people last year prevented attacks being imposed. No, it was 100,000, I heard that, no? It was some exaggeration. I was not, I was not, I was not there. And, time two here. days ago in Romania, 20,000 people brought down a government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, uh, uh, that's a question, why we don't do that? I have a certain answer here because of education system, the taxation system, and so on and so on. These are, so there are many things in the society which uh, serves that your dignity, uh, dignity and uh, your personal sovereignty melt down, you know, but it gets, starts from the, your childhood. And that's what I can see here all the time. So that's why we are really easy victim of this uh, erosion, of this uh, corruption process, which is not all the time about money. It's a moral question. And, uh, you know, I guess the role of the art should be to point it out. I was on an uh, after talk, Art by Chilling, he, uh, he addressed this question, what do you think about corruption? And the people were really the cream of the highbrow people, you know, the, so really. And they so pushed away this issue for them. I was really surprised. Uh, this, so, 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 so this is like the, the, the Jewish questions, so our 56, so, so, so many things. We don't have to really go deeply to the main essence of the question. So, so the art is, uh, this is one role of the art is very important. The other one is what I also learned recently uh, because I was surprised because after, when the immigration battle went on online, it turned out many of my friends were, were against so much the, uh, uh, against the, the, the migration, uh, uh, how should I say, migrators? Or? Migrants. Migrants, my, yeah, migrants, Refugees. sorry, sorry, migrants. I was really, so it was a, a, another division in our society. The, the line was totally somewhere else, where it was before. So that was for me, it's a big, big surprise. And I learned one more thing, uh, very, it all became much more clear. So that's uh, the, uh, the cooperation so important because those who had met, for example, with a Lebanese or a, not Italian, Italian of course, any African or any Asian, and they knew what does it mean, you know, then they had, a, they had an experience. They knew how they behave differently. And they, are, they, knew, they knew a little bit why they behave differently so they have uh, much more open, much more yielding, much more cooperative, 
And those who really just in the countryside, living in a village, they don't have job, or if even they have a job that's local, they don't meet people. What, what is for them this situation? The enemy is coming, they take away the job. You know, that's, so that's what you just said. That, so art, the art must have a new role. This is kind of participation, how to make a kind of uh, collaboration and to make a bigger and larger society, which is way, in a way uh, a communication too. And it's important because this way we can generate public also. So this is my question. I have a quick reaction to the, to the question um, about strategies. Um, and I think, as Yuri mentioned, you can, um, even if we don't know, we can see that some institutions have strategies, which is a good thing. But the major problem, and um, you pointed it out, we would need a kind of national cultural strategy to see where uh, our nation would like to go, and it would be easier to integrate then these institutional strategies. And um, again, going back to my London work, that was a major difference. Uh, and obviously, I'm not completely um, idealized of the British system, but at least they have strategies. And that's why it was a tremendously difficult job to represent Hungarian culture there, because working with the government, and in Hungary, all the funds is for a year period. And um, as far as I know, Arts Council England gives us three years um, fund, and this is just a tiny thing that, but they understand how culture works. You cannot plan things in a year. So, I mean, that was hugely difficult for me to get in in a British institution where they plan five years, and my term was four years, and to, under, to make understand my government that we have to dedicate, yes, this exhibition there two years before. And it was constantly a gambling, and this is maybe, um, I'm not, not happy it's recorded because it's a bit off record, but a lot of directors, we were really gambling to say in the UK, yes, I promise, here's the kind of, um, um, letter from the uh, from the ministry that we will pay, we will do this exhibition, etc., etc. But I knew that it was not true because here all the funding scheme is for a year period, which is a tiny little thing, but it shows that unfortunately strategies and vision in in a kind of national level, uh, I think it's missing and it's equally important, I think, as money. Hi, Margaret from um, the United States. I'm just struck by the, the incredible metaphor of being on this beautiful cultural space, which is a ship. Here we are in a country whose cultural policy, um, despite the pressure from outsiders uh, and from their own colleagues in Europe, and certainly from abroad, including the US, is insisting on its own sovereignty, insisting on making itself an island. And we are the cultural workers, both inside and out, who are trying to ply the waters. I'm not comparing us to immigrants, of course, but it's just a very powerful metaphor today. I really appreciate this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, Gordon Tomka from Serbia. I'm really struck, I guess, as most of us, with this image of the faceless crowds crossing our countries. But I would like to draw a parallel to another crowd, like a faceless crowd that we also talk in a similar fashion, and that is actually our audiences. Too often we talk about our audiences or publics or whatever in a very similar fashion. And I think in art world we really too often maybe talk about ourselves, and when we talk about others it's some distant, unknown, faceless other. If we want to change or to contribute to a change, we need to change that, I think. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much for this remark because this is exactly what I would um, would like to to, to answer um, to the remark of uh, the the French colleague uh, uh, who asked about so what what kind of work with the audience and what what is the re what is the art artists or art organizations reaction towards this new new phenomena and um, and I to give some some uh, uh, encouraging uh, examples that. Um, by the end of this discussion. Um, so for instance, here and now in Hungary, all these kind of outreach programs uh, and, uh, and, uh, and audience development uh, programs, um, um, which are in a, 
in the performing arts uh, scene it's are, are in their early phase so it's quite a recent phenomena but are very uh, very um, enthusiastically and intensively uh, reacted by general audiences faceless audiences as you 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 mentioned and and uh, since there are more and more theaters more and more um, um, organizations or even the orchestra I, I work for is, is a pioneer in this this work when you can when you make make direct encounters with uh, youngsters or less young uh, uh, people interested in, in in the artwork or in in, in these uh, uh, creative moments of of, of, of co-producing something so there this relationship changed radically and I know that in in, in many of your countries it it has been a long uh, long long tradition but in Hungary it's just um, uh, uh, starting now and we have very very good experiences on them and at the University of, of Theatre when I'm teaching there is um, I'm responsible for a new class which which does this theatre and education um, um, uh, professionalism uh, for instance and uh, professionalization and um, and there is also a big interest and, uh, and a very good um, um, climate <laughs> around this so I think that 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 you're absolutely right we have to explore uh, new ways of, of of involving audiences, meet them, uh, break this wall of, of of indifference, create opportunities where where this eye contact is, uh, can be made. And I think that there is, as in Hungary, the the, the percentage is the same as as you mentioned that. 10% of the, the population is, is intensively involved in state-subsidized uh, cultural uh, programs. So we, we have to reach out more. We have to go to places where, where this kind of culture never, never gets. And we have to go there not only with an artistic vision and a ready-made art program, but with our toolkit and, and create uh, moments where, 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 where people can uh, discover uh, new experiences. And I. Fortunately, I can witness many of these kind of initiatives here in, in our country. Of course, they are extremely small scale, but if you if you do that and if you are persistent uh, in in doing that, it 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 will help to to create a, a new new audience and uh, and um, and ensure that that there will be uh, people attending the mainstream events also in in the in the future or creating something completely different uh, as they wish in alternative ways. Yes, uh, maybe we've just got like a few more minutes um, on on the whole question. Of each of you are teaching the arts in different ways. Just picking up on what Martis said, Ildiko, um, what are you teaching now? What should, what needs to be taught? Is it the same as that always has been, or is there something new or different? What needs to be taught in this country today? Um, well, it's now, um, I'm, I'm going to answer it for two uh, different, different perspectives. One is more like the art perspective, so the content perspective, which I think um, critical, um, critical view and braveness to ask questions and braveness to think. I think that's, that's, that's crucial in Hungary um, to... Um, incentivize uh, people in the universities, but even, even even younger kids, to learn this kind of um, dialogue or discussion culture. So not always accept what it's taught, always question what is taught. And I was just recently at the CEO on, on, on an interesting uh, um, seminar, and uh, that was exactly what they were talking about. That even in CEU, which I think it's an island in Hungary, the Central European University, I studied there, so that's that's really an island, and even there, it's an issue how to engage, involve, made uh, the the students uh, more critical. So that's the content answer, uh, and also just reflecting, um, uh, ending this that I was recently in Germany at the Schilling uh, Children Film Festival, and um, it's about also education, and it's reflecting what you were saying about the refugee. Crisis um, at the opening of the festival, one of the representative of the of the city asked the German pupils, uh, I mean kids, um, to help refugee kids in the school. And even if, uh, I mean, I'm saying this, that was so strong because that was for kids. There was thousands of kids, different age groups, from six till 14, 16, and so that was the 
the, the main, um, ma main kind of opinion in Germany that openly said, so I would have wished that in Hungary would have happened the same, which reflecting what you're saying. Uh, on the practical side about education, which I just did a survey about film uh, education and film practice and training in Hungary, and it came out that the practice-based um, art education and film education, for example, is, is quite missing, but I think it's an old debate in film education that how content-based and how artistic-based and how practice-based should it be, so it's not a new question. But it turned out that in, in Hungary, I, I think especially Marty can say about the University of Film um, and, and, and Theatre Drama, that I think that's not bad, this kind of artistically uh, thought film education. And um, so actually one of the findings of my research was that where film fund can step in, that somehow connect the industry, film industry and the film education. So somehow make possibilities to filmmaker to try out and not immediately um, step in the big competition uh, to put together a film and to apply for the Hungarian Film Fund. Um, and even they started already an incubation program, which again for first filmmakers can help uh, to get in the market. So the entry uh, in terms of film, I can speak about that only right now, is, um, is really make it easier to entry um, to the film making practical market. Um. Uh, mm, mm. So it's uh, what, what, what I experience. I have to emphasize all the time that uh, be systematic, be organic. Look for a long vision, and then uh, I guess th these are the three key points for me. And 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 uh, there's a frame, and the frame is that crisis management. So, because in Hungary that's typical, this is it's ongoing crisis. <laughs> no money, no system, <laughs> uh, no vision, and so on. But in this among these circumstances, you have to exist, you have to work, you have to get ahead. And there's one point when you have to step out from one person management to work with a group group of people with employees. That's a very very crucial point and I can see many many failures at this point and then the other other point is that how to work internationally which is big problem because if there is no touring here it means you don't have you don't understand the system there and you have to step out everybody uh, uh, um, everybody expect from you that you have that knowledge. You know, this is very, very specific, specific Hungarian uh, situation in performing art. So, so that's all. Just very, very briefly, I, I'm not, not fully agree with what you said, Yuri, just to create some <laughs> ten tension by the end of the discussion. Um, because I, I think that uh, talking about Hungary, there is money, there is system, and there is a long-term vision. Uh, when I meet uh, uh, students, uh, younger generation, uh, 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 future professionals, I have the chance to work with at the uh, theater university. The challenge for me is how to uh, how to introduce them into these existing system because what we definitely lack is transparency. So it's very very difficult to understand and learn how these uh, big structures which are uh, crucial for the, the, the operation of our society are created and, and, and run. So for me, it's, it's, it's one of the, um, the, the biggest tasks to, to explain them and also uh, to, to, to make them more, more, more uh, reflective and critical about the systems that, um, that uh, influence our, our uh, daily life. And I'm, I'm every time, I'm really shocked to, um, to, to see how, how little they, they, they know about. And I think it's partially connected to the media consumption um, uh, a bit, so they, they don't read newspapers, they don't, um, so they just pick up quick information uh, uh, from the net, but it's also a sort of indifference towards our own, own issues. So I think 
I, I see there a huge responsibility for any kind of um, uh, education, whether it's management, whether it's um, 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 outreach or audience development uh, projects, and and I think and I see that that the value of that kind of um, expertise is becoming uh, more and more important, and not just beca because uh, artists need these kind of professional uh, uh, helpers or, or supporters, but also because having this kind of, of, of mentality or having this kind of, of, of reflect, reflective uh, position towards what's going on around us uh, makes you a more um, valuable and a more autonomous or re re less or less easy to corrupt person in uh, in in our society, and I I see there there are still a lot of people uh, willing to to become so. Thanks. There's one more comment. Here. Oh dear. Uh, dangerous. Hello. Ooh, sorry. Loud voice. Hello. My name is Liz Pugh, and I work for an independent arts organisation in the northwest of England and I just want to add something to the conversation and tell you about um, yesterday um, IETM organized some pre-trips and I was um, I went on a pre-trip to um, an area of Hungary where Spec Street Association are working with Roma youth and um, a a conversation we saw work that um, the organization is doing um, with Roma young people um, and in schools and it was a really um, a fascinating day and I suppose I was surprised we were in a little minibus a micro bus and there was only um, I think 10 of us and I suppose I suppose I would say to everybody, um, when, and I know it ta you people have to take time out of work and whatever, but if you're coming to um, an event like this, a conference, and there is a pre-meeting trip organized in the interests of knowing something of where we are and looking people in the eye, we did a circus skills workshop as part of the day. So there was 25 Roma young people and 10 of us um, informal European theatre meeting professionals. And we all balanced something on our head and walked around the room and said hello to each other. And to do that, we had to look in each other in the eye. And we were very, we became equal in that moment. And I suppose um, my first thought is take the opportunity if it's offered there should have been more than 10 people. We could have had a big bus, but we only had a small bus. And the other thing to say was um, the conversation that happened in the minibus on the way back with Balash, who has that, runs that organization, we were talking about leadership and he was, um, he was talking, or, or we were discussing how we might use theatre and the skills that we have as theatre professionals to create, um, to help create the, the, the leaders. And I suppose looking at training the other way, yes, of course, there's the how do we train theatre professionals, but, but also remembering that the, um, the, the very brilliant skills that theatre makers have of storytelling, of making connections, of finding the humanity um, that connects us. Those skills are fundamental um, and we should be looking, all of us, at how we um, are working with the next generation. The, I speak as a, a, a not young person and so, you know, making those connections that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we should slowly be finishing, I think. I would add, I would offer one final image of my own as well. Um, uh, a, a friend of mine was traveling to the United States with a group of Hungarian folk musicians um, in the last year or so. And sitting next to her on the plane was uh, a woman from Transylvania, a Hungarian, 
um, ethnic background from Transylvania who'd never been on an airplane before. And um, she was very worried before they got on the plane. And to the surprise of the others traveling with her, she slept the whole way. She shut her eyes before takeoff and uh, when they landed, it wasn't in New York, it was further across. I can't remember where it was a nine hour journey or something. Uh, she opened her eyes and people started congratulating her. How did you sleep all the way, you know, if you were so worried before? And she said, I wasn't sleeping, I was praying. And as I see the refugees arriving in um, Europe today, how many of them are praying all the way? And how, when we speak about defending Christian culture, are we neglecting how many believers are arriving among us who are praying all the way here, just as many of us are still in our own ways praying all our way there or wherever else we go on our holidays or on our trips around our towns. So thank you all very much for taking part this morning. Thank you very much for coming. Um, and some words about the organization before everyone gets up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Ildiko. Thank you, Mate. Thank you, Jury. It was great uh, to have your views on the, on the situation here. Um, the Trans Europe Hall mob and the ITM mob will split. Our, our ways will split. I asked the ITM people to go uh, back to Aquarium. Um, if there's, there's half an hour before our first working groups start, be it in the Central European University, in D17, which is very near to Aquarium, there has been a, long, a wrong address circulating, but realize it's very, it's the, D, the address is very near to Aquarium, or in Aquarium there are three working groups starting at 12.30. If you don't manage to get your badge and to register before that time, don't panic. We have the registration desk will be open afterwards and you will be allowed in without a badge, by exception. Um, it is in Aquarium. You can walk around, uh, um, along the river until you meet the um, tramway 47, take that one, and it brings you the, the terminal is at the same square as where you find aquarium. Sorry? It's the end of the 47 line, yes. Uh, or 49, okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, one of your compatriots said, uh, Democracy is an acquired taste, and maybe we didn't get enough time to acquire that taste. We will discuss the role of the artist in the democracy for the oncoming days. Thank you. Uh, I'm very sorry, too, because I was in the other room following the debate. Okay, it's Maurizio Settembri from Fabrica Europa. Um, I want to ask you your help and your support. Because yesterday evening, we get the news that our um, wonderful place, Stazione Leopolda, which is known for all the artists of everywhere, will be sold in uh, Alasta, in consumption, will be sold uh, the 2 of December. And this is a new that railway society decided to do without asking anything to the other, and the city, the region, and everywhere. So at this point, it is very difficult in 25 days to organize the possibility also to, to participate, to, this, uh, uh, to organize that this, this wonderful place, which is... Uh, an heritage is a bane, is an heritage is a, is really one station of the 18th of the 18th century. It's been built in 19, in 1850. May, may I, may, please. 
let's start a, a, a communication about that okay. because I think we have to. Leave. Okay. Yep. And so, what I ask to you is uh, if you uh, agree that all together uh, we ask uh, to the institution to have uh, to be democratic. That means uh, to open a panel of discussion about uh, we can all together, the artist and the international community with the institution to save this, uh, this wonderful, uh, fantastic uh, place for the contemporary in Florence. Thank you for your support. I will send you a letter to everybody. Thank you.